Wir kommen zum nächsten Punkt der Tagesordnung, die Europäische Bürgerinitiative für den Schutz kosmetischer Mittel ohne Tierquälerei und ein Europa ohne Tierversuche. Und ich darf der Vertreterin des Umweltausschusses und öffentlicher Gesundheit und Lebensmittelsicherheit, Frau Maria Spiraki, das Wort erteilen. Thank you, Mr. President, Commissioner Jourova. The Safe Cruelty Free Cosmetics Commit to Europe Without Animal Testing European Citizens Initiative has gained more than one million signatures from at least seven member states. And this organizer presented this case in a hearing before the MV Committee on May 25 in, in the committee, and you were present, Madam Commissioner. Members of the initiative expressed strong concerns that despite the existing legislation, Banning animal testing for cosmetics in vivo testings is on the rise. The initiative calls on the Commission to protect and strengthen the cosmetic animal testing ban and initiate a legislative change for all cosmetic ingredients without resorting to animal testing. Also to transform the EU chemical legislation, in particular CLP and REACH, by managing chemicals without the addition of new animal testing requirements. And third, to modernize science in the EU by setting the scheme with a new legislative proposal in order to plot a roadmap to phase out all animal testings in the EU before the end of the current legislative term. While most colleagues in ENVI committee supported the initiative, there are concerns focused on the issue of visibility and reliability of the alternatives, particularly with regards to health and pharmaceuticals. The need for more research, of course, before completely phase out of practice is undeniable, according to my opinion. It is important for us in ENVI to ensure full implementation of existing legislation and propose new initiatives to promote alternatives to animal testing. We have to increase the uptake and implementation of non-animal methods and also to overcome the default reliance on animal testing, particularly in light of the revision of CLP, which is in the pipeline, and also on REACH. We also need to ensure a consistent approach on the question of broadening the scope of the ban of non-EU countries. The Commission has also to do her job to accelerate the transition to non-animal testing by developing the guidelines in cooperation with OECD and to consider alternative methods in upcoming initiative. Increased cooperation and investments in the use of innovative technologies and data non-vivo origin is needed. Dear colleagues, the current strategy is not sufficiently and effectively implemented. We need a holistic approach for phasing out the animal testing we also are convinced that animal testing would be phased out in due time, recognizing the current limitation, particularly to the pharma sector, for important and rare disease. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, our next speaker for the Landwirtschaftsausschuss is Frau Mazali Aguilar. Gracias, señor Presidente. Bueno, esta iniciativa, que parte de un gran número de ciudadanos de los diferentes estados, está pidiendo a la Comisión proteger y reforzar la prohibición de la experimentación con animales para la industria de cosméticos. Pero también está pidiendo modernizar la ciencia de la Unión Europea, eliminando progresivamente todos los ensayos con animales antes de que finalice la actual legislatura. Desde una perspectiva científica, sobre todo en lo relacionado con las enfermedades cerebrales y en concreto con la enfermedad de Parkinson, una prohibición total del uso de animales en la investigación biomédica sería un error. Aunque se han logrado avances considerables utilizando alternativas a estos ensayos, la mayor parte de lo que puede aprenderse sobre el cerebro y su comportamiento sigue dependiendo, directa o indirectamente, de la investigación en modelos animales. La eliminación, aunque sea progresiva, del uso de animales en la investigación médica tendría consecuencias negativas muy importantes y afectaría a los avances en la mejora de la calidad de vida de los muchos enfermos de estas afecciones cerebrales y neurológicas. Tenemos que garantizar que la prohibición de experimentación con animales para cosméticos no se extienda a la investigación médica. Gracias. Thank you. Für den Petitionsausschuss überbringt die Stellungnahme Frau Anna Miranda.
Muchas gracias, presidente. Señora comisaria, en nombre de la Comisión de Peticiones del Parlamento Europeo, quisiera aprovechar esta oportunidad para felicitar a los organizadores por su buen trabajo y por haber recaudado el apoyo de 1,2 millones de europeos y europeas comprometidos en eliminar los ensayos con animales en la UE antes del final de la actual legislatura. La herramienta ICE vuelve a dar visibilidad a las iniciativas ciudadanas promoviendo la democracia participativa. Si bien el fomento formal de los métodos de ensayo sin animales es exclusivo de la UE, existen obstáculos burocráticos para su aceptación. Su uso no se aplica adecuadamente y la financiación para su desarrollo está siendo insuficiente. Algunos Estados miembros han adoptado medidas nacionales de ejecución que garantizan un elevado nivel de protección de los animales utilizados con fines científicos, mientras que otros solo aplican los requisitos mínimos. A pesar de los avances logrados, gracias a los ensayos con animales en el desarrollo de tratamientos médicos y vacunas, incluyendo las vacunas contra el COVID, los ciudadanos europeos apoyan la prohibición total y global del uso de animales en investigación. Es necesario reemplazar los ensayos con animales por métodos alternativos avanzados para cumplir con los objetivos sanitarios medioambientales establecidos en los distintos planes europeos. Para lograr el objetivo de la Directiva 2010-63-UE, es crucial mejorar la coordinación entre los Estados miembros y las partes interesadas para desarrollar un plan de acción a nivel de la UE que promueva la reducción, perfeccionamiento y sustitución de los procedimientos con animales vivos. Esto debe hacerse sin comprometer la protección de la salud humana y el medio ambiente ni poner en riesgo la soberanía tecnológica de la UE. Es necesario fortalecer también el espacio europeo de investigación y basar el plan en la investigación de re realizada en la UE hasta ahora. También mecanismos de financiamiento preferencial para los métodos sin animales en todas las iniciativas de investigación. Las instituciones académicas tienen un papel esencial y deben promover alternativas a los ensayos con animales, difundiendo nuevos conocimientos y prácticas. Debe priorizarse la educación y capacitación de científicos. Hay muchos elementos a analizar y estoy segura que la presentación de hoy será muy útil y constructiva. Muchas gracias. Paljon kiitokset, kollega Miranda. Ja nyt olemme kuulleet valiokuntien ehdotukset ja sitten seuraavaksi komission puolesta varapuheenjohtaja Vera Jourova. Olkaa hyvä. Madam President, honorable members of the Parliament, thank you for the invitation to come and speak on behalf of the European Commission at this plenary debate on the initiative Safe Cruelty Free Cosmetics Commit to a Europe Without Animal Testing. First of all, I would like to thank the European Parliament for having organized a successful public hearing on the 25th of May. And at this occasion, I also want to congratulate again the organizers for collecting 1.2 uh, million uh, signatures uh, in a record time. And uh, we heard from them uh, their arguments. Uh, we uh, listened very carefully. The organizers had a chance to present their initiative and the different members to express their views also. And today's plenary debate uh, gives me and my colleagues preparing the Commission official reply another opportunity to listen carefully to the, uh, to the contributions and interventions <coughs> from various members. This initiative reminds us that animal welfare is a significant concern for European citizens and a long-standing principle in European legislation. It requests to strengthen the animal testing ban under the cosmetic regulation. It then addresses all legislation requiring animal testing for chemical safety assessments, REACH, legislation on plant protection products, biocides, pharmaceuticals and others. Lastly, it extends to basic and applied research, including biomedical research, training and education. On the first issue related to cosmetics, it is important to know that the cosmetics regulation already bans animal testing for cosmetic products and ingredients for safety assessment requirements of that regulation. However, other legislation may still require animal testing, for instance, to assess hazards to workers' health or the environment. Regarding chemical safety assessments under different legislation, I would like to underline that already today animal testing is allowed only as a last resort. However, as experts 
uh, of agencies like the European Chemicals Agency or member state authorities confirm we are not yet able to fully identify all hazards to health and the environment without some animal testing. The good news is that we see significant progress in the development of animal, non-animal methods in recent years. The workshop on new approach methodologies that the European Chemicals Agency organized with the Commission and stakeholders in June undoubtedly showed that. The funding of research for alternatives to animal testing is highlighted in the initiative. I want to emphasize that the Commission already actively supports the development of such methods through research funding. Over the past two decades, the European Union has allocated over 1 billion euro to more than 300 research projects. Today's exchange of views will feed into our reflection. We will present our general conclusions as well as the actions that we intend to take in response to the three objectives of this initiative in our communication later this month. I wish you a fruitful discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr.